there's really something quite nice about sitting in the camper van on a dark evening and just going through guidebooks, looking at maps, making notes, ready for the day ahead. And the intention tomorrow is that we're going to walk over the Lowes Water Fells. That'll include Burnbank Fell, Blake Fell, Carling Knot, Gavel Fell, and if time allows, we'll go on to Hankoom, down to Little Dodd, and back here to where I am near Lowes Water. The forecast is good tomorrow, and hopefully, if the weather plays ball, the colours of the autumn leaves are now starting to turn, and we should have a good day. Let's see what tomorrow brings. The Lowes Water Fells are located south of Cockermouth and west of Keswick. Our walk begins at Maggie's Bridge, a car park at the southern end of Lowes Water. From there we'll take the track along to Homewood, onto the terrace path that will take us up to Burnbank Fell. We'll then head south and then towards Carling Knot before carrying on to Blake Fell, down to Gavel Fell, across White Oak Moss to Hencombe, north to Little Dodd and then past High Nook Farm back to the car. Well, the weather forecast was right. It's a beautiful day as we head along the track that will take us to Homewood. Low Fell and Darling Fell are over to our right across Lowes Water. Just as you go through the gate there's a sign and a path which will take you directly up towards the terrace path through the wood. But we want to take this better path along the lake shore. Hidden away in Homewood is this bothy which is run by the National Trust and you can rent it for accommodation. It's certainly a get away from it all place. We carry on along the good track before heading sharp left and going up towards Home Force, a lovely waterfall set amongst the woodland. The path now gently ascends through the wood. In a short distance you'll see a path that comes up from the left and cuts across this main track. We'll take the path on the right that heads up higher through the wood. and then a few hundred yards, you come to the edge of the wood and pass through a gate. Now that we've left home wood behind, we're now on to what's called the terrace. And it's a very easy trod, it's a well-made track that goes round the side of the fell, basically contours round the side of Carling Knot and Burnbank Fell. Well, we could turn left and that would take us straight back to Lowes Water for a nice easy short walk, but we're not. We're going to go to the right and follow it round, right round the side of the hill, round the side of Burnbank Fell, should I say, 
and that will take us to the path that leads up to the summit of Burnbank Fell. It's a lovely route, very easy, nice underfoot, and the views over to the right towards Darling Fell and Low Fell are fantastic. This well-made track may have been part of the coffin route between Buttermere and Lamplew, but whatever its past purpose, it now provides wonderful views across to the other fells. There's even a seat where you can perch for a while and take in the grand view of Grassmore. We carry on along the easy track until we reach a gate. But we don't pass through the gate, we almost double back on ourselves taking another track that goes through the bracken. And then almost immediately right, a finer track heads steeply uphill towards the wall. That's the one we're taking. The wall comes to a sudden end at a slope of scree. And where there's a fence there's a stile, which we cross over and head directly uphill. In the pictorial guide Wainwright marks this as the only cairn on the fell, but it's now very tumble down and in fact there's more than one cairn located on this hill. The path is now turned into a farmer's track and the gradient eases. Keep an eye out for pellets like these, they're actually the droppings of red grouse. They do live hereabouts but they're very difficult to see. And here we are at the top of Burnbank Fell. There is a small ken but that wasn't there in Wainwright's day. His summit is this metal straining post at the corner of the fence. Just to satisfy my own curiosity, I cross the fence and head over towards the old quarries which are marked on the map. There's no path here, you just have to make your own way. There's some spoil heaps and a very neat wind shelter which gives a great view across to the west coast of Cumbria. We recross the fence and head down to the Col, which would lead up to Blake Fell. But we're not going to Blake Fell direct. We're going to cross the stile and head up to the high rise on the left, which is Carling Knot Summit. The intervening path is quite faint, but there is one and it crosses marshy ground. We soon reach the ridge of Carling Knot and a wide landscape of mountains has opened up before us. Brilliant on a day like today. That's Blake Fell to our right, but we're not heading there, we're going to go to the summit of Carling Knot first. There are several piles of stones on the top of Carling Knot, but there are two main cairns. One at the far end has excellent views over Lowes Water and the western coast, but the main cairn has been formed into a really good wind shelter at the very top of the fell. It's a really quite strong breeze out there, so it's nice to be tucked into this shelter on Carling Knot. Now, there are plenty of shelters on top of the fells, some better than others. 
but I would rate this in the top 10. Perhaps because it's not a Wainwright fell, it's fairly unknown and fairly intact, let's put it like that. But it's built out of one of the old tumuli here on Carling Knot. And as you can see, it's fairly substantial. And what makes it special is when you sit here, facing the entrance, you get that view of Grassmoor. There are worse places to sit and have your lunch. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to head over to Blake Fell, which is up behind us here, and over then to Gavel Fell. And as it looks as if we're okay for time, we'll probably do Hencombe and Little Dodd as well before getting back to the car. It's a beautiful day. I mean, it's wall to wall sunshine, but it's warm, hence the reason I'm wearing my t-shirt. But it's very windy. I mean, it's a warm wind. So from here on in, if you see that the camera's shaking a bit uh, or the sound's not very good, I do apologize. But as you can probably hear already in this shelter, that the wind is, is uh, really quite strong. So we'll crack on and um, head over towards Blake Fell. It's a straightforward route between Carling Knot and Blake Fell, with a fairly good path, and the gradient only steepens as you near the summit of Blake Fell. The summit of Blake Fell is marked by this low, round wind shelter, which has great views. But it's such a strong breeze up here today, it's no place to hang around. We'll move on. To reach Gavel Fell, it's simply a case of following the path that runs adjacent to the wire fence. Close to the fence is the summit cairn of Gavel Fell. It's a large pile of stones sat on some short cropped grass. And it's got some fantastic views. The next fell of the day is Hengkum. To get there, what I have to do is follow this fence line down towards White Oak Moss cross the fence, walk over the boggy ground of white oak moss and then up the slopes to Hencombe summit. There is a defined path across the moss but believe me it is wet and boggy. Once across the moss you're heading up the slopes of Hencombe. All that wet ground is now behind us and we're back on terra firma. And here we are at Hencombe summit with its small ken. It's a place I know well and it brings back happy memories as it's one of the special paintings that I did for the Wainwrights in colour. Made even more special as it featured my two dogs at that time, Zoe and Zeta. As you can probably tell from the footage that I took at the top, 
showing the summit cairn on Hen Coombe. It was rather windy. So I've just dropped down off the top now into this little sheltered spot. And uh, what we're going to do next is going to take the walk down to Little Dodd, which is just down there. It's the middle lump before you can see Lowe's Water and not usually visited by Wainwright baggers, but it's part of my list of the Lakeland 365 because Wainwright included it on his preliminary lists. So I'm going to go there, have a little look. I've only been there once before and that's quite a while ago. And then we'll drop down and head back down to Maggie's Bridge where the car's parked. Still, beautiful day, it's just this wind is uh, so strong, but can't complain, out on the fells. There is a path between Hencombe and Little Dodd and you can just see it running through the heather. Instead of following the farmer's quad bike track, we'll cut off to the left on that narrower path, which will take us to the top of Little Dodd. You can tell how unfrequented the top of Little Dodd is, because the path is very faint, and on the very top there are just two small stones embedded in the grass. No big cairns here. But it's a fine top, with rather good views. But onwards we go through the heather, across another little rise which gives an impressive view of low fell and low's water. We're making our own way off Little Dodd. The plan is, is to head down towards the beck. This is almost the best part of the day, with lovely evening light. And we're a little bit more sheltered here out of that strong wind. We descend the slopes of Little Dodd and cross the river to the old quarry site on the far bank. There's a good track here, which at one time must have been the track between the mine and High Nook Farm. With low fell in front of us, it's an easy walk down the track and through the farmyard. High Nook Farm was another place that I painted for the Wainwrights in colour. Below the farm, we cross the beck and the brand new bridge. This is a replacement bridge after the devastating floods from a few years ago, and it looks as if it's just been finished. Now we're nearly back at Maggie's bridge car park. It's been a long day, but really enjoyable. All of those Lowe's water fells done, plus the two of the Wainwright 365. Some lovely light, but wow, it was windy. And uh, probably the sun and the wind has caught my forehead a bit, but never mind. Last, t last tan of the year. It probably looks darker than it is now. It's only quarter past six, but um, the light's faded. Last of the sun on Grassmoor up over there. But yeah, good day. And even though I didn't get any sketching or painting done, I think I've got some good references which I can use in the future. And certainly good information as well, having a really enjoyable walk. I hope you've enjoyed watching it. If you have, click the like button. And if you want to see more of my films, then do subscribe to my channel. 
when I'll be uploading more films shortly. Thanks for watching.